so all of you know that uh, the classical clinical feature sorry classical clinical features of a community acute pneumonia is a varying combination of fever cough varying amount of sputum chest pain especially pleuritic in nature and uh, breathlessness this uh, this uh, this uh, breathless these symptoms in varying combinations will be there for those patients admitted with the community acute pneumonia if you go through a little bit a little bit a little deep into the history uh, we will get we may get some of the etiological diagnosis also for example if the patient is presenting with a flu like symptom we can make sure that it is most likely it is a viral pneumonia and similarly if the patient is having any of immunosuppression for example the patient who had undergone a splenectomy some likely organisms may be encap encapsulated organisms like pneumococci or haemophilus influenza and if the patient is the patient is the hiv positive in addition to the usual organisms we have to consider other organisms like the pneumocystis tuberculosis viral etc and if the patient is neutropenic we have to consider fungal infections also and if the patient is having a structural lung disease we have to consider a pseudomonas infection if the patient is high, if the patient has got an history of exposure to birds we have to consider the chlamydia because like that we have to go a little deep in the history so that we can have an idea about what are the possible etiological agents which is behind the community pneumonia if you take uh, covid 19 also if you go to the literature what we can see that majority of the patient around 90% of the patients will be having fever uh, which is followed by dry cough which will be present around 70 percentage followed by fatigue myalgia and breathlessness and in addition to these common symptoms headache sore throat rhinorrhea and gi symptoms also have been reported in varying combination in covid 19 patients uh, coming to how to assess the severity of a community acute pneumonia most important uh, factor is the physiological examination especially the respiratory rate counting a respiratory rate in a pneumonia is very important any respiratory rate which goes beyond around 25 or 30 we can we can make sure that patient is likely to have a severe pneumonia in addition to the respiratory rate the confusion heart rate especially when the heart rate is goes beyond 125 or 125 or when the saturation is 93 that also to a certain extent indicates severe pneumonia so in the overall what we can say that the respiratory rate is the most important physiological factor which decides the severity in addition to the respiratory rate the confusion heart rate and saturation oxygen saturation will give an idea about the severity of a community acute pneumonia in addition to these physiological parameters if the patient is hypothermic especially when the temperature is less than 36 degrees centigrade that indicates that indicates a severe pneumonia and in addition to hypothermia the presence of thrombocytopenia significant leukopenia especially the count is less than 4000 elevated blood urea especially when the blood urea nitrogen is more than 20 mg per dl and hypotension as well as the multi lobar involvement all this indicate patient is likely to have a very severe pneumonia and patient needs intense monitoring and at least a high dependency unit admission there are many the risk predictions models are available one of the one of the simple uh, risk prediction model is what is called the curve 65 curve 65 c stands for presence of a confusion u stands for the urea blood urea and nitrogen especially when the nitrogen level is more than 20 mg per dl and r stands for respiratory rate more than 30 and b stands for a blood pressure systolic blood pressure less than 60 or a diastolic blood pressure less than sorry a systolic blood pressure less than 90 or a diastolic pressure less than 60 as well as the age more than 65 so this 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 is a simple prediction model anybody can calculate this curve 65 only thing is that except the blood urea and nitrogen all other parameters we can very easily we can uh, assess like a confusion of rate bp and based on this curve 
prediction model, we can classify according to the uh, score. Going in the curve 65, we can classify into mild, moderate, and severe pneumonia. Those patients who have got a moderate to severe pneumonia, it is always it is always better to better to admit in the high dependency unit or in the ICU. In addition to this curve 65, there are many other risk prediction models like IDSA, MAP COP, pneumonia severity index. All these are some of the prediction models that you can, as for your convenience, you can apply. And all these risk prediction models will tell you the mortality, predicts the mortality as well as it tells whether the patient needs an ICU admission or not. So, can it be applied for a COVID-19? These uh, risk prediction models not that validated in a COVID-19 patient, but however, uh, uh, any heart, any respiratory rate more than 25 to 30, or when the saturation is less than 90 to 93%, or the patient is confused, or the patient has got a hypotension, or the patient, if the patient has got a rapid progress in chest radiography, that all these indicates a severe pneumonia, and we can predict that patient is likely to, uh, like, likely to become very bad very soon. So this, is, this can be applied for COVID-19 also. What investigations shall we use for community care pneumonia? We will always ask for a good quality sputum for gram stain as well as culture. In addition to that, we'll always ask for a blood culture, chest x-ray, and a total leukocyte count and a differential count. But what about COVID patients? Sputum induction, any aerosol producing procedure, like a sputum induction or a bronchoscopy is not recommended for a COVID patient, if you have for okay, COVID. But if you go for a blood test, usually classically, a community pneumonia will show either a leukocytosis or a leukopenia. Both indicates severe pneumonia. For a COVID patient, if you go through the literature, what we can see, the most important uh, blood, uh, hematological uh, derangements are leukopenia, leukopenia, and relate uh, leukocytosis to a lesser extent. And lipopenia is supposed to be one of the one of the most frequent finding in otters. And in addition to that, mild thrombos mild thrombocytopenia as well as elevated CRP is also has been reported in COVID patients. So, uh, what about the respiratory support? Along with the general supportive care and specific antibiotic therapy for a community care pneumonia, three things we have to give: supplemental oxygen. If the patient is hypoxemic, get hydrates properly. And uh, if the patient is immobile and the patient is admitted in the ICU or high, high dependency unit, you have to consider the thromboprophylaxis also. So these things are essential in addition to the specific antibiotic therapy for a community pneumonia and keep saturation at least 90 for, a, for a above. As per certain airline says that, keep the saturation at least above, at least above 94, except in COPD patients where we can accept a lesser uh, saturation around 88 percentage. So when to do a blood gas, yes, five things we have to remember. When the saturation is less than 92 percentage, or when the risk of hypercapnia is very high, for example, for a patient with a pneumonia, or the patient is, is a patient, there is no reliable oximetry, or those patients are fitted in the ICU, or the patient has got an increasing requirement of oxygen. All these five conditions, it is always better to go for a blood gas yes analysis. When the oxygen requirement is uh, more than 40 percent, that is FIO2, FIO2 means fraction of oxygen in the inspired air. When the FIO2 requirement is more than 40 percent, that uh, will approximately, if you are giving a 6 liter oxygen through a simple face mask, that approximately comes to around 40 percent FIO2. It is always, in that condition, it is always get an opinion from a senior physician. And if the FIO2 is 50 percentage or more than 0.5. That means approximately it will correspond to an 8 liter oxygen through a simple face mask. In that condition also, it's always better to get an ICU PM. So, you know, you know the hypoxemia means a reduced oxygen saturation in the blood and the PO2 is less than 80 millimeter mercury. We will say, we'll, we will say that patient is likely to have hypoxemia when the patient is breathing at room air. And when the PO2 is less than 50 millimeter mercury at room air, we will call as a respiratory failure. And uh, uh, there are so many oxygen delivery devices are available. The standard one, the usual one, the common one is a standard nasal cannula. Through a standard nasal cannula, 
we can supplement around 40 to 35 to 40 percent of the oxygen. That means that will correspond to an FiO2 of 0.35 to 0.4. If you are giving an 1 to 4 liter of oxygen through the standard in ethyl cannula, uh, remember that if you go beyond this flow rate, those beyond 4 liter per minute, there's no, it is not going to improve the FiO2. So there's no meaning to uh, supplements uh, through a vanilla at a flow rate of 10 liters or 15 liters because it will not going it is not going to improve the FiO2. There is a limitation. There is a limit for the FiO2 uh, for the nasal cannula. Which can, which can. Similarly, if you use a simple face mask, uh, the FiO2 varies between 35 to 60 percentage for a flow rate of 5 to 10 liter. Remember that the minimum flow rate which is required when you are using a simple face mask is at least a 5 liter per minute. Because if you are keeping a less flow rate, less than 5 liter per minute, there is a risk of rebreathing carbon dioxide. So in order to flush out the expired air, when you are using a simple face mask, uh, always keep at least a 5 liter per minute. And other um, uh, oxygen, de de oxygen delivery devices are only the venturi mask. The advantage of a ven venturi mask is that we can precisely control the FiO2. FiO2 varies from 24% to 60%. That means 0 0.24 to 0 0.60. Yes, this kind of uh, device is especially useful when you are treating a COPD patient because precise control of FiO2 can be ensured when we are using a venturi mask. That's the advantage of a venturi mask. If you want to give it much uh, higher FiO2, you have to go with a non-rebreathing mask with the reservoir. If you supplement at the 5 liter, 15 liter per minute, you can achieve an FiO2 of 0 0.60 or more. And uh, recently, nowadays, we have a high frequency nasal cannula uh, also available, which is, a, I figure it's a, which is a high flow oxygen device by which you can give up to 80% of, approximately up to 80% of the FiO2. So when you are admitting a patient ICU with hypoxemia. We have to monitor seven parameters. You have to monitor regularly. You have to monitor the temperature, the respiratory rate, the pulse, the blood pressure, the mental status changes, oxygen saturation, and the inside oxygen concentration or the oxygen requirements. These seven parameters has to be continuously monitored for all patients who are getting admitted in a high dependency unit or an ICU, any increasing requirement of oxygen or any change in the mental status always warrants patient is going, going patient is deteriorating. Is deteriorating. So another, the last question is when we support the respiration, there are six indications as far as the community community is concerned. The patient, the work of breathing, of, the work of breathing is very high and patient is in distress. Always can mechanical ventilation because patient can soon go into exhaust and patient can go into respiratory arrest. And similarly, when there is an increased work of breathing, as evidence by too much tachycardia, tachypnea, sweating, usage of axillary muscles, all these cases, the work of breathing is too high and patient is soon going into respiratory arrest. And similarly, the patient has a uh, depressed conscious level of consciousness is depressed. Or if the patient has got a patient's and hypoxemia, even after supplementing with the uh, um, FiO2, or if the patient has got a progressive hypercapnia and, and respiratory acidosis, carbon dioxide is going up and the pH is coming down, and or the patient is developing a shock, BP is coming down, patient is developing a shock, all these all these uh, status, all these conditions warrant the immediate need for a mechanical ventilation. I'm not going to details of uh, each and, uh, of the mechanical ventilation. This is in short about uh, how to uh, identify a severe pneumonia, especially it is if you can practice this of a risk prediction model like uh, curve curve 65, and probably we can apply probably we can apply for COVID pneumonia also, and it is very easy to apply uh, these uh, risk prediction models. Uh, for our uh, routine practice, the only thing is that if you apply a core profile, we only lab parameter which you need is a blood urea nitrogen. Apart from all these, uh, uh, all these, uh, all these other parameters are physiological. We can easily uh, assess all these parameters. And uh, this is in short about the uh, 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 severity assessment in a community pneumonia. If you have any doubts, I can clear. Thank you.
audible any class any clarification needed hello good afternoon hello good afternoon good afternoon dr anupama Yeah, that is a nice presentation, yeah, doctor. Yeah, no, thank you, madam. Uh, doctor, then another question. Uh, most of the people, uh, recently, for the studies, like, under the, those who have the respiratory issues, I mean, the lung issues, all the work, future complications. Even if they recover, also they have future complications. In the body, another, then the key agam, another, maybe mild asymptomatic cases, along with other, a mild pneumonia, or like, when the phone work problem. ിമിറ്റേഷൻ <laughs> Usually, uh, COVID I don't know, but for usually every patient, uh, for some time, I remember that usually that will uh, subside by itself. Basically, it's a lung fibro. Fibro. There's a early stage of the fibro proliferative uh, st- uh, stages there. To a certain patient, to a small group of patients, can go for a residual fibrosis that may limit the exercise capacity and set up and some sort of uh, breathlessness on exertion and usually it will subside by itself usually it will not cause too much sequelae uh, okay doctor and they will can pregnant ladies going for this uh, lung complications more than others anything like that in uh, covid patients yeah. pregnant really lung complications uh, i don't have any data about covid patients uh, okay. uh, they are uh, okay i don't have i don't have any data okay doctor thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you so about the curb 65 do all okay. the five uh, parameters have the same uh, value yeah score is one one for each one for each okay yeah one for each thank you thank you thank you and if you have a patient who is coming with an early respiratory disease up to what point okay. should we treat at a primary level or should we treat them at all if you are suspecting covid itself or if you are suspecting covid itself as per the current guideline we have to inform the disha and we have to divert to special special centers But uh, uh, overall, for a community community pneumonia, this is as far as the physiological parameters within the li- within the within the specified limits. Even if for a primary physician or even for an outpatient, we can treat and we can for a mild mild. So many many of the guidelines says what says that if the patient has got a mild community pneumonia, uh, if we, if we can treat as a outpatient, but only thing is that we have to follow it for at least for next to 24 24 to 48 hours. We have to follow it and make sure that patient is stable. the patient has physiological parameters are within the within, within the physical within the normal limits we, we can consider a outpatient treatment also that's no harm in only thing is that we need to follow strictly we have to call them and we make sure that the patient is stable enough but at this point of time any respiratory illness has to be uh, considered as covid unless proved otherwise am i correct yeah 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 any any initial pneumonia especially the pattern is uh, viral in nature acute bronchitis at this point of time we have to consider unless otherwise proven it is always better safe to consider the uh, patient is likely to have a, a covid infection and you better to take the necessary precautions until proven otherwise always better our respiratory support one more respiratory jam sorry respiratory support when to do prediction alla respiratory prediction models models one of one of the respiratory model is curb 
C stands for confusion, whether the patient has got confusion or not. Mm -hmm. And U stands for a blood urinate. Okay, today, only, that's only lab test which we have to do. Yeah, and R, more than 20, more than 20 milligram per deciliter, then uh, this is, this is a score one. Confusion, what score one? If the respiratory rate is more than 30, score one. Systole BP less than 90 or diastole BP less than 60, score one. And the age is more than 65, score one. The score is between 0 to 1, we can consider that it's a mild. And the score is 2, we can consider that it's a moderate. And the 3 to 5, that means it's a severe. This is one of the uh, prediction models. That can be applied what for the that? emergency department. Most of the Why studies is are with them. What is the 65? Yes, that is 65 is the age which is validated use uh, when they when they did a validation using this score okay. they identified yeah. they, they uh, 64 as a cut off points to predict uh, oh, okay, between okay. a severe pneumonia versus a uh, less severe pneumonia it's a cut off point yeah it's a cut off point so uh, there are many other uh, risk prediction model as per your uh, choice you can uh, ats have published so many risk prediction model smart cop is another pneumonia severity index is an another one uh, overall uh, it's overall really. overall it predicts mortality and uh, overall, it will tell you whether the patient needs ICU admission or not. All these risk prediction models, almost uh, same sensitivity, specificity, and predictive values. Okay. And any uh, patient with uh, respiratory symptoms uh, coming with uh, conjunctivitis, uh, should we treat or should, I'm an ophthalmologist, I'm at Amardi Bike Care, Trivandrum. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, uh, and uh, should we treat? Them or should be sent to a center dedicated for uh, uh, at this point of time by the government? I think current government, current guidelines uh, they are not recommending unless there is a unless there is a uh, contact with the high coming from the coming from the no, uh, outside. It's an upper respiratory infection coming with conjunctivitis. We used to get a lot of adenoviral conjunctivitis. Okay, uh, okay. A lot of them. But now, because of this, we can get conjunctivitis. I think, uh, because the recommend, I think government is not recommending to send all patients with uh, uh, upper respiratory infections to a COVID center. They have okay. specific they have, uh, they, they have, they have specific guidelines are there. Uh, Doctor will, uh, 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 Doctor Pravin will uh, explain uh, which oh, other patients you. should be sent to. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? I will hand over to Dr. Pin and he will explain how to trage. So much. Uh, yeah, I, I, he, will, he will explain how to trage the uh, uh, suspect with the COVID. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Suresh, sir. In the moment, 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 Testy and all you get lay Namuka as of now illa. I don't do a name. Ningla major private hospitals, one ninety five hospitals in the Matter Network in Lunda. Our Elan than Namuka reporting in Lunda, Nil reporting in Chainunda. From Idil Pedata, Yangle Hospital, Ningla Arangle, Undangilo, other Lingle, Nangaria on the weekly practice in Alcaranda, the Lingle Tibetary Clinic Lunda. People are not trend in the major hospitals. COVID suspect numbers are not good in the private hospital. But in the clinic, we practice in the crowd. We have to strictly practice in the clinic. We have to notice the Ingin a samsya orang la raja jenggal itu mana orang, orang yang lidah itu bandar petal karu, orang anggil, misteri orang itu jenggal, klinikal kairan dah ni mumba hari ikan mana orang la. Anggane orang la raja sembunyai itu mana le, nama le baki orang la kairan orang itu, kita tanya, 
അവിടെ വെച്ച് പരിശോധിക്കാനോ പാടില്ല ഇതിന്റെ ടെസ്റ്റിംഗ് ഫെസിലിറ്റിയോ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അംഗീകൃത കോവിഡ് സെന്റേഴ്സിലോട്ട് തന്നെ വിടണം അത് എല്ലാ വീട്ടിൽ പ്രാക്ടീസ് ചെയ്യുന്നവരാണെങ്കിലും ചെറിയ ക്ലിനിക്കുകൾ ആണെങ്കിലും അത് കർശനമായിട്ട് പാലിക്കണം അത് വീണ്ടും ഒരു ഇന്നൊരു കളക്ടർ ഓർഡർ ഇറക്കിയിട്ടുണ്ട് അതിന് കാരണം ഞാൻ ഈ പറഞ്ഞതാണ് നമുക്ക് മേജർ നമുക്ക് ഈ റിപ്പോർട്ട് ചെയ്യുന്ന ഒരു നൂറ്റി തൊണ്ണൂറ്റി അഞ്ച് ഹോസ്പിറ്റലുകളിലും ഒരുപാട് നമ്പേഴ്സ് കൂടുന്നില്ല അപ്പൊ ഈ പേഷ്യൻസ് ഒക്കെ ഈ ചെറിയ ക്ലിനിക്കുകളിലും ഇങ്ങനെയുള്ള സ്ഥലങ്ങളിലോട്ട് പോകുന്നതായിട്ടൊരു മനസ്സിലാക്കാൻ പറ്റുന്നത് അതുകൊണ്ടാണ് ഈ പറഞ്ഞത് എല്ലാ ആൾക്കാരും ഈ ആസ് പെർ ഗവൺമെന്റ് ഗൈഡ് ലൈൻ സസ്പെക്ട് ആണെങ്കിൽ ഷുഡ് ബി നോട്ടിഫൈഡ് ഈ വരുന്ന രോഗികൾ അവരുടെ കാര്യങ്ങൾ സാധിക്കാൻ വേണ്ടി വെളി വിദേശത്ത് നിന്ന് വന്നതായിട്ടോ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ വിദേശ വന്നവരുമായിട്ടോ നമ്മുടെ സേഫ്റ്റിക്ക് ആയിട്ട് നമ്മുടെ സേഫ്റ്റിക്കായിട്ട് നമുക്ക് ക്ലിനിക്കാനും മുന്നിൽ ഇത് എഴുതി വെക്കാമെന്നുള്ളതാണ് അത് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റുന്ന കാര്യം എന്നിട്ട് അയാൾ പറയാതിരിക്കുന്നെങ്കിൽ പിന്നെ നമുക്ക് പറ്റില്ല പിന്നെ പലപ്പോഴും നമ്മൾ രണ്ടു മൂന്ന് പ്രാവശ്യം ചോദിച്ചാല് മിക്കവാറും ഇഷ്ടം കിട്ടാറേയുള്ളൂ എനിക്കിപ്പോ മേജർ ഹോസ്പിറ്റലിൽ നിന്ന് കിട്ടുന്ന ഒരു ഡേറ്റ അനുസരിച്ച് ആദ്യം വരുമ്പോ അവര് പറയാം പക്ഷെ രണ്ടു മൂന്ന് പ്രാവശ്യം ഒക്കെ ചോദിച്ചു കഴിയുമ്പോ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഈ കൊണ്ടുവന്ന പേഷ്യന്റ് അവര് കൊണ്ടുവന്ന പേഷ്യന്റ് സിക്ക് ആണെങ്കിലും ഒക്കെ അവര് റിവീൽ ചെയ്യാറുണ്ട് അപ്പൊ നമ്മള് കൃത്യമായിട്ട് ചോദിച്ചാലും മനസ്സിലാക്കാനും അതിന്റെ അതോടൊപ്പം തന്നെ ഈ പുറത്ത് ഒരു നോട്ടീസ് പതിക്കണം ഇത് മറച്ചു വെക്കുന്നത് ശിക്ഷാർഹമാണെന്നുള്ളത് മറച്ചു വെച്ച് അങ്ങനെ ഒരാളെ കിട്ടുകയാണെങ്കിൽ അയാൾ നിങ്ങൾ പറയുന്ന അനുസരിക്കുന്നില്ല എന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ ഡയറക്റ്റ് നമ്മുടെ വൺ സീറോ ഡബിൾ സെവനെ വിളിച്ചാൽ അവർ പോലീസിനെ അറേഞ്ച് ചെയ്ത് അതിനുള്ള നടപടികൾ സ്വീകരിക്കുന്നതായിരിക്കും അതിൽ പലപ്പോഴും നമ്മുടെ പരിചയക്കാരോ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഇനി അവരെ കാണേണ്ടതാണെന്നൊക്കെ വെച്ച് മറച്ചു വെച്ചാൽ പിന്നെ നമ്മൾ അതിലൊരു പ്രശ്നത്തിലോട്ട് പോകും അല്ല ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് ഈ ഒരു രീതിയിൽ ഒന്ന് രണ്ട് അനുഭവങ്ങൾ തിരുവനന്തപുരത്ത് അല്ല കൊല്ലത്ത് ഞങ്ങളുടെ ഹോസ്പിറ്റൽ ഉണ്ടായത് കൊണ്ട് തന്നെ ഒരാഴ്ച മുൻപ് തന്നെ ഔട്ട് പേഷ്യന്റും സർജറീസും എല്ലാം വൺ വീക്ക് മുമ്പ് തന്നെ ഞങ്ങൾ ടെൻ ഡേയ്സ് ടെൻ ഡേയ്സ് ബാക്ക് ഞങ്ങൾ സ്റ്റോപ്പ് ചെയ്തു എനിക്ക് തോന്നുന്നു പ്രാക്ടീസ് ചെയ്യുന്ന എല്ലാവരും തന്നെ ഇതുപോലെ എമർജൻസി അല്ലാത്ത രോഗികൾ അല്ലെ നോക്കാതിരിക്കാന്നതാണ് ഏറ്റവും വലിയ ഡോക്ടേഴ്സ് നമ്മുടെ ഇപ്പം ഗവൺമെന്റ് ഡോക്ടേഴ്സിനാണെങ്കിൽ കെ ജി എം ഒ അത് കൃത്യമായ ഡയറക്ഷൻ അതിന്റെ മെമ്പേഴ്സിന് കൊടുത്തിട്ടുണ്ട് നിങ്ങള് ഇത് കഴിയുന്നത് വരെ പ്രൈവറ്റ് പ്രാക്ടീസ് ഒന്ന് മാറി നിൽക്കാൻ അപ്പൊ അതുപോലെ എല്ലാവരും ഒരു തീരുമാനം എടുത്താൽ ഈ പ്രശ്നം നമുക്ക് പരിഹരിക്കാവുന്നതേ ഉള്ളൂ വളരെ ശരിയാണ് നമ്മുടെ ഇതുപോലുള്ള റെസ്പിറേറ്ററി വൈറസുകൾ എല്ലാം തന്നെയും ഒരു അമ്പത് ശതമാനം വരെ സ്പ്രെഡ് വരുന്നത് നോസ്കോമൽ സ്പ്രെഡ് ആണ് നമുക്ക് എല്ലാം അറിയാവുന്ന കാര്യമാണ് അപ്പൊ അത് അറിഞ്ഞു വെച്ചുകൊണ്ട് നമ്മൾ വീണ്ടും ഒരു നമ്മുടെ ക്ലിനിക്കിലും വീട്ടിലും ഒരു ക്രൗഡ് ക്രിയേറ്റ് ചെയ്യരുത് എന്നുള്ളതാണ് ഇതിനകത്ത് ഏറ്റവും പ്രധാനപ്പെട്ട കാര്യം രണ്ടാമത്തെ ഒരു ഒരു കാര്യം കൂടെ പറഞ്ഞ് നിർത്തണം അതായത് ഇപ്പൊ ഇപ്പോഴത്തെ ഇന്നത്തെ സ്ഥിതി വിശേഷം വെച്ച് നോക്കുകയാണെങ്കിൽ ഈ ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റൽ സ്റ്റോർസ് മോൾ ഇത് അതായത് നമ്മുടെ മോർ അതുപോലെയുള്ള ഷോപ്സ് അവരുടെ അവരെല്ലാം എയർ കണ്ടീഷൻ ആണ് ഡോർസ് എപ്പോഴും ക്ലോസ്ഡ് ആണ് ഭയങ്കര തിരക്കാണ് അവരെല്ലാവരും വന്ന ഡോർ ഹാൻഡിൽ തൊട്ട് തന്നെ ഞാൻ വഴി തുറക്കുന്നതും ആ വണ്ടിയെല്ലാം ഉണ്ടിക്കൊണ്ട് പോകുന്നതും അവിടെ ക്ലീൻനെസ് ഇല്ല ഹാൻഡ് ഹൈജീൻ ഇല്ല ഹാൻഡ് വാഷിംഗ് ഫെസിലിറ്റി ഇല്ല ഞാൻ ഒരു ഞാനൊരു നാലഞ്ച് സ്ഥലങ്ങൾ കണ്ടു എല്ലായിടത്തും നല്ല തിരക്കും ഭയങ്കര ക്രൗഡിങ്ങും ഇൻ എയർ കണ്ടീഷനും ദാറ്റ് ഐ തിങ്ക്ഷണമെന്നാണ് എനിക്ക് അതെ അതെ നമ്മുടെ സൈഡിൽ നിന്നും അങ്ങനെയുള്ള കാര്യങ്ങൾ ഓൾറെഡി ശ്രദ്ധയിൽപ്പെടുത്തിയിട്ടുണ്ട് നമുക്ക് പറയാൻ പറ്റുന്നത് അവരുടെ ഡിസ്ട്രിക്ട് കളക്ടറുടെ അടുത്താണ് അദ്ദേഹത്തിന്റെ ശ്രദ്ധയിൽ ഇങ്ങനെയുള്ള കാര്യങ്ങൾ എടുത്തിട്ടുണ്ട് അതിനുടനെ ഒരു പരിഹാരം ഉണ്ടാവുന്നതാണ് തോന്നുന്നത് ഈ രണ്ട് പോയിന്റ്സിലാണ് ഇനി നമുക്കൊരു കമ്മ്യൂണിറ്റി സ്പ്രെഡ് വരാൻ ഇൻ ദമിങ് ടെൻ ഡേയ്സ് വരാൻ നല്ല ചാൻസസ് ഉള്ളത് വൺ ഇൻ ദ ഹോസ്പിറ്റൽസ് വെർ യു സി ജനറൽ ഒ പി ഡി ആൻഡ് ടു ഇൻ ഷോപ്
ാണ് <laughs> 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 Okay thank you thank you so much